YouTube, I dug this out the other day for doing my aim video. Um, also in the fact that uh, I've been going a bit mad stratty, so I kind of think the reason I've really got this one is because it's a strat. Even though it's, how does that light doing that now? It's a mega metal series, which is a really not the name that this guitar should really have because it's not really very metal, really. Um, it does have a pointy headstock. It does have a Floyd Rose, it does have a humbucker in it, but it's really a Strat. Um, this is from 1986, one of the, la the last year of Matsumoku built guitars, uh, or I think they made some in 1987, but not very many. So I think this was a sort of cost-saving exercise where they were trying to use up um, old bodies and old parts from other guitars, or the body specifically. This is an Aria RS style body. Um, and there's lots of lots of cool name ones. There's one called a Night Warrior, and then there's ones that are just RS. They've got different headstock, but they're basically this guitar. Um, but as I said, there, I said the other day, my pal Ronnie's got an amazing looking yellow one with a sort of maple neck and a Stratier headstock. Uh, at the area headstock, not that good on the like the normal the the previous versions of this. It's you know some headstocks are some some headstocks look nice and some are just kind of a bit sort of. Not really to my taste. Uh, this one's not. It's not brilliant. It's just like a sort of. It's very much a nineteen eighty six headstock in it. So uh, nineteen eighty six. This one, yeah. So I've actually fixed this up for the first time. I've ever really got it working properly the way I want it to. Um, I played it the other day, uh, just using the fuzz pedal, but it was fretting it all over the place and stuff like that. So I've adjusted the truss rods. I haven't changed the strings. I just scraped them, put them back on again because I'm really tinky. Um, I've now wired it back up the way it should be wired, which is a this is a kill switch, this is a phase switch, this is a push pull uh, coil split for the bridge pickup, MMK forty five pickups, a pickup, um, yeah, Act three trim, black painted neck, usual area go to tuners, you know, to top of the line these days guitar. I looked them up on um, the internet. And actually, when you type in Metal Master, you get like about or Mega Metal. The on, on the first page, half of them are me or the pictures of me playing this guitar. This guitar sitting on my driveway, and also uh, my pal Wayne had one. I don't know if he still got it. I think he tried to say he might have sold it. it. Was basically the same but white. Um, yeah. So this is a stage three one, and it turns out there's a stage one. K P I. Cabling for uh, Calor, I think. It's like a single pickup and a uh, Shark 2 Thinlays. The Stage 3, which is this one, and the Stage 3 stage three KPI, which is I've got the Calor, the Active Pickups, and HSS. So this is uh, and the Shark 2 Thinlays, so it will be the, the simplest one. Although I'm noticing that there in that picture, this is not the same as the one in there. This one has a scratch plate, that one doesn't. That one's also got a sort of, um, before they had Floyd Rose licenses, uh, make their own one this is pretty much a Floyd Rose although it does have the you don't have to cut the ball ends off it's kind of like the Washburn F600 whatever it is so it's like a wee allen key there and you can it's like a wee flap so you put the ball end in there and you put you pull a wee flap down which means you don't have to cut the ball strings off which is obviously a good thing um I think I found strange this one is this doesn't say licensed Floyd Rose on it and I was led to believe that the licensed Floyd Rose thing was this see the way it's the nut and it's the clamps um, apparently that's Floyd Rose licensed. This part he isn't licensed. So when you get like, if you look at any guitars to, uh, prior to nineteen eighty six, all the Ibanez and all that, they've all they've got the clamps, but the clamps are it's got a nut and then the clamps are up here somewhere because they weren't allowed to do this for the Floyd Rose infringement. So I'm not sure exactly how this one sneaked through. I noticed that the one in the picture there doesn't have a Floyd Rose. Actually, I looked up another. There was another page with the spec sheet for it. Oh, come on. Yeah, so spec sheet, uh, older body, replaceable maple, original smooth joint neck. I think that's the way, see it's kind of sort of curved there, all, all, all areas have that. Uh, Rosewood 23 fret, scale one 650mm, pickups one MMK45 humbucker, resistance 11.6k, two single coils, resistance 5.6. Master volume, passive tone, five weight lever, push pull pot for humbucker, coil splitting, Mary switch for phase reverse and a kill switch. Unmarked Floyd Rose unit with fine tuners. 
yeah, okay, maybe. It's not unmarked though, because it says Act 3 on it, so I think that's the different one. The one that I showed you the picture of a minute ago, and it's a bone nut, and this does, obviously doesn't have a nut, it's got the metal clamp on it, so this may be a European variation of whatever that is, maybe that's the American one, it's available in black or dark metallic purple and in, in, in nearly black. Oh, white with pick guard is there, whereas this is black with pick guard. No, it's, de it's definitely, this is definitely a factory black, black one. Yeah, so quite rare anyway, as I said, they're using up the old parts from, well, I think the like Road Warrior, Night Warrior, the cat may be a little bit simple as well. So last of the Japanese ones. Um, so I'm going to shut up and start playing it a little bit now. But now I've got my Strat, I can now see that this is a Strat. I've kind of learned a little bit on how to play them a little bit more. Neck position, uh, position four. Middle position, which no one ever uses. We have a coil split it, position two. Spike it. BC15, no pedals, and let's go through that cabinet, the mic's up there. Unprocessed. Well, YouTube processes it, so not as good sounding as it does in the room, but as close as I can get it. Yeah, so if I go back into the single call, this position two, and then this position two phased. actually kind of useful for you, maybe you use it for funk, but it's kind of, I think it sounds kind of acoustic -y. bass sounds. So I'm going to do a wee bit of a shootout with this, the, the Strat, um, but I'll play, I'll stick a wee, a wee jam in first, I think I might use that phase sound as the back to make it sound a little bit acoustic -y. Okay, first pick up. 
up while it's quiet. You don't adjust any of the volume controls or anything like that. So um, you've seen this track before probably, or if you're first here, if you're first time here, then you've got one of these mega metal things, or I'm going to put in the description all the other ones that are kind of like that. Okay, that one's the mega metal is a Floyd Rose, and it's got a pointy headstock, but there's many other variations that I've got, like a Strat Trem, or even just the Stratty ones, on on a different headstock, but it's basically the same, rough, it's the same sort of guitar. So this is my '94, '95 Japanese. Bender Japan, a photo flame one, uh, with about five hundred pounds worth of pit guard on it. So it's got like a Dimarzio DP, a Fender Gold lace sensor, and a nineteen seventy four strap pickup in it. You know, no expense spare, but about my parts box, and all expensive switches and stuff like that. Um, cost more than what that guitar's worth. Uh, so this is the first time I've ever actually done a comparison of the two. This guitar's just been hanging up in the wall for the last week. Um, this is an awful lot lighter. A lot lighter, <laughs> a lot lot lighter, and I'm noticing the curvy. It's got like a radius fretboard, like a seven point two five inch radius fingerboard, which that's a flatter than that one. I'll check it at some point. I'll check it before I switch back over. Um, yeah, so I think the, this looks more like a strap. Has to be said, and um, oh, try. Everyone always likes to text as soon as I hit the video. Here. I'm not popular all the time. So I'll go for some distortion and continue on with this a little bit more, I think. I'm still going. Rap pedal.
I'll switch back onto that for some distortion and then I'll give you my what I think of the two guitars. Uh, immediate thinking, switching over to, onto this one is it's got less powerful pickups, uh, much more expensive pickups, but much, it's, uh, it's more, this is it's thinner sounding. Uh, the neck pickup in this is maybe quite comparable to that, but the other the other sounds on this are all much quieter. Um, it's much lighter and it's got a different profile neck. Um, it sits slightly differently. There's a, see the the top horn, do you actually, well, maybe not, actually. Um, I think the, the, the top horn on the area kind of comes out to here. So the whole guitar, instead of being here, is there, I think. So just, just you know, a little bit. It doesn't take much to switch the two. I'll measure the fretboard radius as well. So this is 7.25. And this one's 9.25, which is I think more normal for um, most, most modern strats. No, like modern ish, 9.5 is quite common for a fender. Uh, it's quite a bit louder, isn't it? Um, yeah, so this is the neck pickup.
actually finding the kill switch quite useful. The reason I ripped the kill switch out of this is because I just assumed it had been upgraded because I didn't think you got kill switches in 1986. Um, but I think looking at the pictures there, the other ones have the other models in this range have a, an act, active pickups in them. So the kill switch is maybe for turning on and off the active pickups, and they just left it in this guitar. I think this is before the idea. Well, maybe Pete Townsend did it. You know, the stuttery thing. I think it's before that kind of thing actually existed and it's basically just an off switch. Um, yeah, so this, unfortunately I should have changed the strings on it, I didn't. Um, these are, they are elixirs but they're maybe five or six years old and this guitar's not really been played. So it's maybe not holding quite as tune as it could do with this particular Floyd. Um, Comparing it to the Fender Strat, it's like, it's, it's, a, it's a different thing. It's, it is a strat, yes. The biggest difference is the weight. This is heavier. It also doesn't have the forearm chamfer for the notice wise and then it's got a slightly different neck profile, but I don't think this is necessarily an unstrati neck profile. It's just that that particular strat has a very vintagey feeling neck. Um, top top quality. I think, again, if you're looking at, um, you know, I'm not, I'm mad into the, the Japanese guitars. Not so much just because they're really cool. I do think they are really cool. I think some of these things look pretty mad. But um, it's more the quality level of them. And it really is. This is on a par at least with the, the Japanese Fender. Um, the, the, the differences between them are slight preferences and whether you prefer. A, you know, maybe if you really don't like the curved fretboard, this is a better guitar. That's it. You know, it's like you'll think this is a better guitar. Not by looking at it, obviously. Shape-wise... I don't know, I quite like it. The more I look at it, the better it gets. Um, there's a lot of versions of this kicking about. You get, there's, a, there's a lot of Korean ones as well, which basically turn out to be about the same price. They're still decent guitars. Um, not as good as the Japanese ones, um, but because nobody knows what they are, you can pick this up for... How much? Do, I was looking up uh, Affinity Tellys the other day. You can probably pick one of these up for the same as a brand new Affinity Telly. That's like the the second cheapest square you can get and it's at least as good as the Japanese Fender and it's like for people that know I've actually I'm, once this lockdown's over I'm going to borrow um, a Mexican and an American Fender Strat off my pal Scott and then do a bit of a comparison but I think the if you look online the, the people generally think that the Japanese and the American ones are kind of on a par sort of or very close to each other anyway um, both of them have been slightly better than the Mexican ones so this I'd probably say sits on a par with that as well. Um, the thing is, I keep trying all these guitars. It's like, you know, comparing... I don't know, I don't, I'm thinking of the, the Tokai. Because, you know, these are all seem to be 80s Jap Japanese. That's just because I've kind of just learnt that going through that, if you're wanting a really good guitar and you don't want to pay for it, this is how to do it. Um, especially if you're like me and you can do a little bit of wiring, you know, if you get one of these that maybe, you know, the jack socket's loose on it or something like that, or the Floyd Rose needs set up, you know, that's when you're talking about getting it for basically squire money and you're getting a US Fender level type thing. Um, you know, that's sacrilege and shouldn't be spoken out loud. So maybe... When I went from the, the Strat to this there, with the distortion pedal on, maybe it did sound a bit mega metal. Well, maybe not mega metal, maybe it should be a bit more metal. And uh, I think that this, the Floyd Rose, the way I was using it there, rather than using it for doing the Van Halen type stuff, if you just treat it like a Strat one, and you know, do exactly what you do in a Strat, it just is, it's just as good as a Strat one, but it doesn't go out of tune like the way a Strat does. I, I can't put the... I've tried to take out the, there's a trend bar snapped in the, the strap and I tried to take it out the other night and I, I failed. So basically I need to buy another block and then I'm sitting there thinking, do I really, can I really be bothered actually putting a tremolo into that strap? Because I've got other straps with tremolos so I think it's just staying as a, as a, a sort of hardtail. I put the, the, I put heat strike tubing on these as well to stop them rattling. Um, I think I've got a back for this. Yeah, so here's Aria Pro 2. Mega Metal Series Stage 3, quite rare, I think I've only ever seen two of them, I've played both of them, one of my pal Wayne's got a white one, um, but 
kind of unknown, so you can still pick them up for bargain prices. If you look up uh, eBay for R Aria Pro RS, you'll see lots of them that are basically this guitar, but different colours. Uh, some of them are maybe like a Strat Trem, different headstock, and like three single coils. And I think uh, I think the Night Warrior or the Road Warrior, whatever it is, maybe two humbuckers sort of thing. But you know, variations on a theme sort of thing. The Mega Metal is this one. Um, yes so this is one of the ones that probably at the end of lockdown i'll be selling because i keep i'm going to i've got too many guitars i need to try and offload some and uh, i kind of don't need this but if you don't have a strat and you want to buy a strat don't be looking at you know you pick up this instead of a mexican one or a, a square classic vibe or something second hand easily and it just wipes the floor with it plus it's a little bit interesting as i said as i said yesterday when i was playing this it's like see if they just made this just look like a strap, like the way Tokai did with that one. Okay, it's plastic, but um, the, if they just made this look like a strap, this would be a six, seven hundred, eight hundred pound guitar, straight up. But it's not. It's shaped like this, which is kind of not anything, so they don't cost that much. Rock on.